Comedy. It's something that we all gravitate towards in some form or another, and something that we here at What Culture butcher on a daily basis. However, while comedy is subjective, I mean, you might find stuff funny that I don't, and vice versa, there are a few comedy films that seem to transcend this barrier and become comedy classics. These rare films unite the viewers under a banner of chuckling silliness and good old fashioned belly laughs. So, as the nights are getting dark and it's freezing outside here in the UK, let's warm ourselves together with some hearty laughter and look at some of these golden gigglies together. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 11 comedy movies you must see before you die. Why 11? Well, I think that'll make sense as the list goes on, and here we go. Number 11, Blazing Saddles, 1974. When Mel Brooks embarked on what is still perhaps his most popular film, the Western was well overdue for a good old-fashioned lampooning. What he delivered somehow managed to break down the conventions of the genre whilst also embracing and respecting them too. And by now, everyone knows the movie's most famous sequences, but the film's crowning moment must come in its gloriously meta-inclined ending, which sees the characters from the film breaking free from the set and into the studio where the film, amongst others, is being shot. True, it's day in places, but Blazing Saddles still has a lot to say, rather surprisingly, and its deft comments on race relations remain highly apt. Number 10. Ghostbusters, 1984 who are you going to call? Well, the answer is anyone with a phone so you can watch this absolute banger together. To be honest, in places, this is the perfect comedy movie, the subtlety of the character work balanced so finely with over-the-top silliness. There's a film for kids and adults here, and neither side feels pandered towards too much. Plus, it's laden with quotes that cover the film like a thick slime, and that, in the Ghostbusters world, is a very good thing. Best remembered now, perhaps, for its brilliantly catchy theme song, Ghostbusters is often hailed as the pinnacle of 80s comedy ventures, and it's certainly one of the best efforts to have ever come from both Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Number 9. Shaun of the Dead, 2004 from the moment that the TV show Spaced ended, Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg knew they wanted to work together, and their horror rom-com with some zombs showcases why this will always be a good thing. Shaun of the Dead is a brilliant pastiche of pop culture, with a brilliant and truly heartfelt story at its center. It is relentlessly quotable and has a kinetic energy to its shots that make even the shambling undead look like 100-meter sprinters, both of which feed into a supremely well-paced tale of a man looking to do right by his missus his friends, and his local pub. It's inherently British, but because of the beautiful construction, it was accepted and revered around the world. Next round's on me. Number 8. Groundhog Day, 1992 the idea is so irresistible that it's a real wonder that it took somebody until 1992 to actually mine it for comedic purposes. The concept of a man caught in a time loop is at once both a terrifying idea and the best premise for comedy ever. Bill Murray puts in one of his best performances as Phil Connors, a sardonic weatherman who finds himself reliving Groundhog Day over and over again in a small town and eventually comes to realize that there's more to life than snarky comments and alienating everyone and anyone. I mean, I mean, there's a little bit more to it, but not much more, if you, if you know what I mean. Thanks to its careful construct, though, Groundhog Day never veers off course and takes delight in letting us watch Phil grow and change as we get to know that fateful day in intricate detail. Laughs aside, Groundhog Day is also surprisingly dark in places, which imbues it with added bite. Number 7. Doctor Strangelove, 1964 Stanley Kubrick is one of the very, very, very few directors who successfully managed to work in absolutely every genre he decided upon. Horror, sci-fi, comedy, easy goddamn peasy for him it seems. Not necessarily for his stars, who routinely tell tales of his manic obsessiveness and perfectionist stance, but still, when the results are this good, you kind of have to admit it was worth it. Based on a serious novel called Red Alert written by Peter George, Doctor Strangelove pokes fun at the idea of the nuclear scare on a global scale. What most people tend to remember about Dr. Strangelove is, of course, Peter Sellers, who gives one, or in fact several, of his greatest performances, playing three separate characters, the most famous of which is the titular Dr. Strangelove. Kubrick's movie is dense and deadpan, but there are many moments of total absurdity that stick out simply because they seem so very un-Kubrick. The satire is spot on, however, and aside from being irreverently funny to Despite the amount of political and militaristic jargon being banded around, this film is beautifully shot and directed as well. Number 6. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, 1975 
Produced on an incredibly tight budget, one that inadvertently made the movie a lot funnier, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is pretty much Python-esque genius defined, and all these years later still stands as one of the most consistently hilarious motion pictures ever created by human hands. This uproarious comic venture, which sees comic Arthur and his knights on an ill-judged quest to find the elusive cup of the movie's title, thrives on its ability to do whatever the hell it wants, whenever it wants. Indeed, the film doesn't even properly end, it just ends on a whim. We can all fondly remember the Holy Grail's most famous moments. In fact, the Knights of Nice scene was filmed near where I grew up as a kid, so me and my friends would often go down there and reenact this scene as teens. Yes, we were that annoying, but simply put, it is a classic. And there is plenty to go around. The coconut whore's hooves, mwah, delicious. The song and dance at Camelot, the battle with the Black Knight, it's just, it's a classic simply because it remains near unrivaled in its utter ridiculousness. Number five, Some Like It Hot, 1959. Some Like It Hot probably shouldn't have worked. After all, the plot mostly centers around the idea of Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis dressing up as and pretending to be women having escaped the St. Valentine's Massacre in Chicago. Isn't that a little one note? And yet the final film proved quite the opposite, thanks to an incredibly sharp and witty script that never relents or slows to let you ponder the madness for a second, it brilliantly immerses you into performances from its two leads and Marilyn Monroe's best ever turn. In short, Some Like It Hot is a genuine triumph. There had been nothing quite like it up until this point, and the movie thrives on the lead's dynamic and, of course, with their resulting chemistry with Monroe. But Some Like It Hot offers up laugh after laugh, and it's one of the very few comedies from its era that hasn't dated at all. Number 4. The 40-Year-Old Virgin Now, at first, it might seem odd to see such a fairly recent film so high on this list, but trust me, this is a tour de force which reflects a fascinating tangent of comedy itself. The sex-heavy, crass niche of comedy is something that's been around for quite a while, but here, thanks to its rich improvisation, warming and sweet characters, and the fact that it's actually phenomenally directed, Judd Apatow makes this lewd romp feel timely and fresh. The lead, Andy, manages to keep the picture sweet and grounded while the carnival of other characters try to help him out with mostly disastrous results. But best of all, despite the frequently loud and obnoxious nature of the movie, it never loses its sense of heart and humanity. Number 3. Airplane, 1980 a ridiculous romp of a movie that seems to get better and better with age, and perhaps the most quoted comedy flicks to have graced God's green earth. Airplane was designed as a send-up of countless 70s disaster movies that dominated the era and has been lodged into people's memories ever since. We all know the best quote, but Airplane thrives on its sheer rewatchability. Five, ten, a hundred viewings later, the jokes continue to feel fresh, and the gags here come fast and thick, some of which you still might have missed after multiple viewings given the speed at which they're delivered. But the beauty of Airplane is that no type of gag is thought unworthy. There's wordplay, visual humor, slap surrealness, and some stuff that makes no goddamn sense at all, but given the ratio of jokes per minute of screen time, there's never a sense of lagging. And that, my friends, is truly impressive. Number 2. Annie Hall, 1977 Granted, Annie Hall is just as much a relationship drama as it is a romantic comedy, but there's no denying the craftsmanship and care that's gone into each and every one of its very, very funny and very famous jokes. After success with more full-on comedy vehicles such as Bananas and Love and Death, Woody Allen set out to create a more serious comedy picture. Indeed, this is the flick that bridges two stages of his career to brilliant effect. Annie Hall tells the entire story of a single relationship, its good points, its bad points, and channels them through a compulsive clever non-linear narrative that only Alan could have conjured up. In 90 very deft minutes, we learn what makes two people fall in love before it ultimately breaks down. The results are equally hilarious and melancholy. The whole thing is rendered beautifully and realistically, and every single joke hits its mark. And number one, this is Spinal Tap, 1984. This is the only comedy movie that we are officially allowed to say is dialed all the way up to 11, and is one of the most relentlessly hilarious motion pictures ever made. This is Spinal Tap, which stars Christopher Guest, Harry Shearer, and Michael McKean as the core members of a down-on-their-luck British rock band is a bona fide comic masterpiece from start to end. Charting the decline of a failing rock band moulded in the Led Zeppelin vein with almost none of their talent, this mockumentary is so dense with jokes, standout scenes, brilliant 
brilliant performances, amazing songs, genuinely emotional moments and wonderful characters that it's almost surprising the whole thing doesn't explode. And yet the style of the movie ensures that everything follows through in a natural order, that the gags come in a way that feels authentic, and by having them speak directly to the camera allows the characters to say things that they might never have said in an ordinary film. The mockumentary format was revolutionary at the time. Indeed, many thought that they were watching a doc about a real band and wondered why the filmmakers had chosen such an incompetent one allows for a truly beautiful blend of comedy and heart. It's like, how much more good could this have been? And the answer is none. None more good.